Hello everyone, and welcome to Bargain Gaming. Uh, in this episode, we are going to explore a new game that is currently being sold for just under $20. Nobunaga, Nobunaga's Ambition is a really massive empire building game. And let's just start immediately without further ado. Uh, this game uh, allows you to the opportunity to take over the whole of Japan in the 16th century. So let's start with a new game. And so that's the whole map of Japan. The first scenario is a tutorial, which is actually very slow and clunky. And uh, I took it, I tried to go through it, but uh, I, I couldn't last five, uh, five minutes. Anyway, so let's get on with the uh, game itself because I am the kind of person who is, uh, has a really very little patience or attention span for uh, instructions. And so I usually jump in and play and learn as I play. So let's try to do this. Okay, birth of Nobunaga. The X button allows us to choose it. And then uh, in this game, this game allows you to play your own clan. Uh, so I have already pre-generated uh, some officers so that I will have my own clan. And so I will be picking my own clan or if uh, you want to play this game and uh, you can pick any of the clans that are shown there. They all have, look at the number of clans. There's so many clans there. So I'll create my own clan based on the officers officers I have already uh, created. That's pressing triangle. And so I'll click, uh, X is the, I'll press X and it'll say pick a new clan. And to pick a new clan, the square button lets me pick my daimyo. So I will pick Jingun Li as my daimyo. And then the retainers are the other officers that I have uh, created. So I will pick them. The uh, D button or the D pad allows you to go down. So I'll pick all of them and then the X is choosing them. Then the pressing right on the D pad goes to the confirm and then I'll just confirm them. So they are now mine. Uh, and then the L1 button allows me to pick a base. I will start off my base in this little island up in the close to the middle part of the map, Sado Yoshida. And then the R1 button allows you to pick a crest. So I will pick a crest that is very easily seen or so a circle, a yellow circle with a dot in the middle. Now that now I've so that's oh, so now press X again to confirm and then so that is the clan that I have picked so if you are if you can click you can create another clan so you can go down and create another clan but since I'm just playing one clan I'll just pick this one and press the circle button to get back so you will see now we can see that this is my clan and that's my our crest so let's hover our cursor over it and then uh, click X and we start the game. Or rather, we go into the uh, choice of difficulty level for the game. Uh, we'll pick normal in this. Normal actually gives you mid on everything. So uh, mid, s the middle part says that uh, in, a, in a normal game, uh, everybody gets the same thing, you know, in a easy game then your clan gets higher income higher produce higher food every month or every every season uh, while the PC or the artificial intelligence opponents get less every month so I picked uh, actually I picked normal but since I wanted to have a total control of everything of all the castles I own so I picked edit 2 
So I picked everything normal except for the last two on the right column. So I maximized the AI's level to max and then the ability to control provinces to unlimited. So that gives me total control of everything. I, I, in an empire building game, I, I like to micromanage. So if you like to micromanage, boy, this game is for you because you can if you play aggressively in this game, you can actually finish it in maybe 50, 60 hours. But if you play it comfortably or conservatively, then in this, then it will take over 100 hours. Easy. In this uh, scenario, I, the only thing I changed was I changed the lifespan to longevity rather than historical. Because these samurais, you know, they kill each other off pretty quickly and there's a high death level and you need a lot of samurais and then everything's standard then go and confirm okay so we can sort this confirms if those are the choices you picked and so okay confirm again x so we start the game Every month, this is a turn-based game. Every month is a turn. And the first phase of the turn, and each turn has two phases. The first phase is the development phase. On the left side, you will see a column. The column are all developmental buttons. And you can use your D-pad to go up and down these buttons. And then if you, and they're all self-explanatory, you will see develop the town, exact pol enact policies. So at the early part of the game, we don't have much to do actually. So, uh, but the little bubbles beside each button tells you those buttons have further actions that you can actually do along the, that button allow, allows you the opportunity to act or there are things you can do with that button. So in this case, if we press X here, it will give us the first button on that one laterally would be develop the town and the second button is uh, to select a policy so that means it will apply to everything all towns and fortresses in your empire and then the third button is a merchant trading so let's get back to the first button and press x so press x gives us it gives us which fortress or castle to pick so what, which castle or fortress we want to develop. So in this case, since we have only one uh, fortress in this case, uh, let's pick this one with X button. And then it gives us three choices to do. Initially, at the top of this is change. Every castle or fortress uh, requires an overseer. The overseer helps very much, is a critical in terms of how much is being developed. Uh, the higher the political ability of the person, in this case, the overseer, the computer has picked for us, uh, Xi Qinghan, Qinghan has, uh, it, it doesn't matter for me. I allow the computer to pick it for, for us at this time because most of my characters, the starting characters are pretty high level in terms of stats. So it doesn't matter what, uh, it's, it's okay for, for the uh, computer to pick it for me. But later in the game, as we acquire more samurais, some of their uh, stats will be pretty varied. Like they might be strong in fighting, but weak in a, uh, in a domestic area. So then you have to make sure that you check that uh, you can, because you, you're allowed to change who you want to assign as the overseer. So the higher their stats in politics on the domestic front, it's very good for you. Uh, it's very good for your fortress development. So, so they will, uh, and then, so, so we can come down. The crops represent the amount of food that is being developed, oh, food production. And then the crafts amount, represent amounts of stores or gold production. And conscripts are your troops. Now, con conscripts has a red line to it. This red line shows that you cannot uh, pass that red line if you cannot produce enough 
food to support the shore so your soldiers. So if you see, look at this, if we start developing crops, so crops will go up. And it also shows that you can now uh, recruit more conscripts. So the, the red line shortens. So it is important to be able to, f to afford to pay or not pay to, fo uh, to feed your uh, troops that you, that you cons conscribe or conscript. So <clears throat> using the D-pad, we go down and confirm. So we will use crops first. So that's, that's the most you can do on the development. We have only one castle. So click on the circle button and you get out of it you go back to the development uh you're, you're given the development uh buttons now if you so you can move up and down now if you, you can use your left stick to get out so by pushing the left stick to the right you get out of it and to bring to look at it to look at your uh, overall map right so apparently we have a gold mine here and then we see a couple other things. So this is your town over here. And this is a Sado tribe. And there is a Hanma tribe. So that means there are two tribes close to us. They are not our people. They are just tribes out there. And we need to appease them. To bring back the development button. Uh, before I go there. Uh, now in this overhead map. Uh, if you click the R1 that allows you to zoom out and this is the whole map of japan uh, r2 allows you to zoom in now the whole map of japan is broken into different provinces and the red lines define the provinces owned by the different opponents in this game people that the other daimyos and each province has a has a capital and the capital is in the form of a castle the other little cities or towns are called are in the form of fortresses. So these are all uh, these these towns and castles or these fortresses and castles are those that you have to take over. They have hit points. Uh, the castles have more hit points. They have a bigger population base, and they have more areas to develop crops and crafts. Population based also determines how many. Uh, recru recruits or soldiers you can conscript and the easiest way most of the time to tell between a castle and a fortress is that is allow just allow you to or just zoom out when you zoom out you will see typically one castle per province except for this particular one. I'm, I'm surprised at this. Usually, you only see one. So you, if you put your cursor over the Gao clan and then zoom in, you will see that the castle in this area is Kasugayama. Uh, the other one here, this is only a fortress. I don't know why they call it a castle. I'm not sure about this. And you zoom back out and then you go to the province on the right uh put your cursor over it and then zoom back in and you will see when you zoom in it's shibata castle so this is uh on the overhead map then we go back to our fortress for our fortress is part of the southern echigo which is where the kasugayama castle is so we don't have a castle here our, ours is only a fortress let's do the uh triangle click on triangle button and there are a couple other stuff we can do here. So this one shows that since we just started our game and we just got our castle, this button allows us to inspect our own castle. castle. Uh, we might find certain hidden things in it. And the right button of that is the castles or fortress of other daimyos. So we're not going to do that. We'll just inspect our own castles. And it... We automatically pick this one because that's the only one we have. And we can have uh, Ihun in do the inspection. It will cost, uh, wow, 300, 300 gold. So let's do that. And the other thing we can do is, remember the two tribes that are close to us? We can improve our relationship with them. And so we can appease them. In this case, we can 
bit bit can yes and then we can appease the other tribe and then we can pick somebody else uh let's say jane and then so that's it for that button and then this other button is the diplomacy button it allows us to conduct diplomacy <coughs> excuse me with the other daimyos in the game but uh, since we're this early in the game uh you know uh and it costs money actually every month if you are trying to build up uh goodwill with the other daimyos so this is the most we can do here and then uh then in in theory we we can now uh go the last button here ends your turn when you end when you press this button it goes into the battle phase so this is the development phase ending this turn will still be in the month of june but it will bring you to the battle phase uh we will I think it would be a good time to uh, cut this uh, episode here. And uh, if this episode was something you like, or if you learned something from it, please let me know. And uh, click the like button and uh, register so I can produce more of this stuff so that we can all enjoy it. Okay, thank you. And also, wait, uh, to save the game, before we <laughs> click, click out, before we quit this game, let's save it. Go to the options button. Click save. Let's save this as save data one. So next time we can come back and continue with this. So hope you guys enjoy this. And then uh, I will come back with the next episode. And we will continue on the battle phase. Thank you. And see you next time. Bye.